10.2, which is going to talk about the quadratic formula. Let's review a problem on completing the square. Now, this is at the end of your homework for section 10.1. It's not a problem that I'm going to really ask you to do on the exam, at least not the way it's stated here. But if you're asked to complete the square to solve a quadratic equation, it's going to look like this. We're going to give you a quadratic equation. And the left-hand side is not a perfect square. We want to get our left-hand side to look something like this, ax plus b squared equals some number. We want to put it in that form, and then you can use the square root property. So to get it in that form, I'll kick the 2 to the right-hand side. It changes signs. Okay, nothing big there. And then i got to complete the square. Now, you might remember, remember our process the other day. When we completed the square, it was you would take half of the middle number. So half of negative 18 is negative 9. What would I do with that negative 9? Square it. Square it. You'd square it, and that gives you 81. Now that 81 goes right here. You're adding it to the left-hand side. And if you add it to the left-hand side, what else do you have to do to keep things in balance? Add it to the right-hand side. So you can see I've added it to both sides. Now the left-hand side is your perfect square. That's the completing the square part. So you can rewrite that as x minus 9. Notice the way we did this the other day, the two steps we did, these two numbers help you out with the rest of your completing the square. The second number is what you add to both sides. The first number is what the left-hand side squared is going to be. Of course, x minus that number, but squared. This is where we wanted to get to. What would you do now? Mackenzie, what would you do? If you're trying to solve this quadratic equation, it's set up pretty nice for you. What could we do? Yeah, take the square root on both sides. And one thing you've got to be careful of is to remember to take the plus and minus square root on the right-hand side. Of course, 79 doesn't you know, simplify to anything, so we'll just leave it as a square root of 79. That leaves me with x minus 9 equals plus or minus root 79. These aren't like terms. If they were, if this was a number like 5, then I'd have to be careful. But let me just move the 9 to the right-hand side. When it changes sides, it changes signs, just like we saw up here. 2 became a negative 2. Nine, negative 9 is going to become a positive 9. And there's your two answers right there. Now, if this was a number like a 5, something like a combined, then you would do out both answers separately. This is probably how you're going to have to put it in in WebAssign. It's like this, 9 plus the square root of 79, 9 minus the square root of 79. So that's what you can expect on WebAssign. I don't think it plays nice with the plus or minus. I'm okay with you using the plus or minus, but I don't think WebAssign is. So until they catch up with that, just expect that for the notation. All right, well, if I'm not going to ask you to solve by completing the square, how are we going to solve this? What are we going to do? That's a great question. Let's find out. So this is section 10.2. How about if I give you a formula for solving all of these problems? So this is going to be the quadratic formula. Anytime you have anything of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, you can solve it with a formula. This formula has been around for a long time. Anyone want to guess how long this formula has been around for? I think a couple thousand years at least. It's been, it's been around for a long time. Not in this form, not in a form that even I would recognize, but it has been around. So the formula looks like this. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now, typically speaking, I ask you to solve or ask you to write down the formula 
on the test. It's two points. I want to see if you've taken the time to memorize this accurately and completely. Some of the typical mistakes I see are this, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Leaving that b out in space is bad. It changes your answer. That b, that negative b, needs to be divided by the 2a. So that's wrong. It's just wrong. It's not going to give you the right answer. Nor is having a plus here. Nor is trying to take the square root of b squared minus 4a as b minus 2a. There's a lot of things that don't work. There's one that does work, and that's this one. So let's practice a couple problems with this. Let's start out with, you want to start out with an easy one or do you want to start out with a hard one? How do you guys want to start? Hard one. hard one? Okay. Let's start out with example A. Three X squared equals negative four X plus one. So right now, when I look at this, I'm like, well, all right, well, I'm running into a problem because it's not in this form. You've got to get it so that you have zero on one side and everything else on the other side. So the first thing I'll do is I'll rewrite this one. I'm going to move these terms to the left-hand side. Who can remove those terms to the left-hand side for me? What is my new equation going to look like? 3x squared. Good, plus 4x, minus 1. And that leaves a zero on the right-hand side. Notice that Madison definitely changed the signs on both of those terms. Now, at this point, there's a couple options. If this is something you can factor, hey, go ahead and factor it. No problem there at all. But if you look at that, and you're like me, when I took this class at OCC, I couldn't factor these things for my life. I just, oh. No way. I was terrible about this. So let's use the quadratic formula. And we'll find out along the way if this thing would have factored or not. So let's take a look here. That's going to be a 3 here, 4 here, and a negative 1 here. That's your A, B, and C. My suggestion for working with the quadratic formula let me write it down here just for your convenience. Is that when you fill it in, you fill it in with a bunch of empty parentheses first. So what do I mean by that? I mean here, negative of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. So let's see how that's going to look. So b is 4. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 1, over 2 times 3. OK. So all I'm doing is just filling in some formulas here, or some filling in some blanks. Let's see if this will simplify. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16. What happens here? Minus 4 times 3 times minus 1. Plus 12 divided by 6. If you get this far, right here, negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 6, hey, that's great. That's wonderful. You'll get some partial credit. But I think everyone here probably wants full credit. You want to get all the possible points. So what else can I do? Ah, well done. One thing you got to keep in mind is that 
this is kind of like a parentheses. Those terms are married. I can't cancel the 4 into the 6. I can't cancel 6 under the square root. That's doubly bad. But what I can do, and what Madison did, was she split up the square root of 28 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 7 over 6. Square root of 4 is a nice perfect square. So let's keep going with that. That's going to be negative 4 plus or minus 2 square roots of 7 over 6. Okay. Now there's a couple ways you can handle this, but there's one last thing that I should do. Are we okay where we're at here? Said yes. All right. Both of these terms in the numerator have a common factor of a 2. Let me factor out that 2. It's going to leave behind negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7 over 6. Don't get me wrong. You get a, a fair amount of partial credit to get here. You get most of the points. But if you want to get all those points, you got to go a little bit farther. Now that these things are being multiplied, I can cancel into multiplication. I can't cancel into an addition or subtraction. So that's going to leave behind negative 2 plus or minus square root of 7 over 3. Whew. There you go. That is our final answer. So, you know, straight out of the gate, that was a kind of a tough problem. <laughs> How are we looking on that one? Is there anything that maybe I went over a little bit too fast? Let's compare the quadratic formula to, um, to the one we started this out with. How does this work compare to the work of the quadratic formula? Generally speaking, you know, I'm not going to really tell you you have to solve it this way or that way, but certainly I have my own feelings that some of them are more efficient than other ones. So let's take a look at this one. Revisit x squared minus 18x plus 2. Now, I think the numbers in this one will get a little bit bigger than I would give you on an exam. But let's take a look. First thing you should always, always, always try is to see if this thing factors. Can anyone find two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to negative 18? Yeah, I got nothing. So... So then you bail out. The quadratic formula, the nice thing about it is that it always works. The bad thing about it is that, well, sometimes, you know, it's kind of a pain. It's not sometimes kind of a pain. It generally is a pain. Now, in this particular case, this is a reason that I want you to write out the quadratic formula with a bunch of spaces. Negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a. Because it's very easy with this kind of problem to make a mistake. And I'll point out to you the mistakes that people kind of make. The first one is in the numerator. We end up with a negative of what? Negative of negative b, or negative of negative 18. Yeah, which is going to become a positive 18. If you're not being careful and writing down these parentheses, you're going to miss that double negative. Another place that people are going to make a mistake here, when you square that, negative 18 squared is going to give you a positive number. A lot of times people will type in that on your calculator without being really careful. And they'll get something like this. They do negative 18. Make sure you're using the negative on the bottom row of your calculator, not the subtraction key. Negative 18 squared, and they get, oh, negative 324. 
That's not what we're supposed to get. You're really supposed to get parentheses, negative 18, parentheses squared, should be positive 324. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let's try figuring out the whole radicand, that expression underneath the square root. Let me write that out first. Minus 4 times a times c, which is 2. <coughs> and we're going to see some nice simplification here. Let's figure out this one. I think we're going to end up with uh, um, 3, 16. Well, let's just check it out. Negative 18 squared minus 4 times 1, which we don't need to do, times 2 should be 316. So underneath the radical, you're going to get 316. So 18 plus or minus square root of 79 over 2 times a, forgot to fill that in, 2 times a was 2. Oops. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. It wasn't square root of 79. I'm ahead of myself there. 316, and that's pretty good. But kind of like the last one, we got to split it up. Do you want me to do exactly like that did the last one, or do you want me to show you something? Oh, I'll do it exactly like did the last one, and then I'll show you a different trick next time. Now, 316 is probably a bigger number than I'd make you work with on an exam. But if you went through your list of perfect squares, you'd find 4 goes in there 79 times. And, oh, this should be starting to look familiar. What happens to the square root of 4? 2 square root of 79. Pfeiffer, do you see anything else I can do in the numerator? Is there something I can factor out? Yeah. Let's factor out a 2. Uh, Kez, if I take out a 2 from both of these, what's that leave behind? Perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. And now that I got that over 2, guess what? Those 2's cancel. 9 plus or minus the square root of 79. So it's the same thing as we got when we started out. I don't know. Personally, you know, yeah, this was a little unhappy, you know, uncomfortable at the end here where we had to deal with the square root of 316. But overall... I, don't know, I think I like the quadratic formula better on this one. What do you guys think? If you were if you were choosing which one to do on an exam, which one would you choose? Quadratic formula or completing the square? You've seen both now for this problem. You choose to skip it. <laughs> which one, McKen? Quadratic formula. I kind of like that one. You know, this one. It just feels like a lot more work. You know, we get to the same spot eventually, but uh, I think I like the quadratic formula as well. In any case, you should count on having to use a quadratic formula on your exam. Okay, let's keep going. Let's do a couple more that uh, you could face. And... Let's see. Let's just practice evaluating this stuff underneath the quadratic formula for just a moment. Let's start out with this one. And let's see what we can do in terms of simplifying it. So for starters, what do you see that can simplify in the numerator without really breaking a sweat too much? All right, the double negatives. That becomes a positive 7, plus or minus. The denominator is clearly a 4. All right, Josh, how about under the radical? Under the radical, this expression is called the radicand. Is there anything I can simplify underneath the radical? Uh, the negative 7 squared turns into positive 39. Good. 
And then minus 4 times 2 times minus 6. Uh, um, uh, close. Let's do this. All right, so negative times a negative is a positive, so we got that. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 6 is... There you go, 48. All right? But yeah, the, the big thing is to get the positive there. So 7 plus or minus the square root of 97 over 4. And that's it. That's all I think they're looking for you to do. Maybe they're interested in you getting a numerical value as well, numerical approximation. So let's practice that as well. Let me clear out all this stuff. I remember there was two ways to do this. One way that everyone can do is with parentheses, 7 plus second square root of 97. Right arrow, parentheses, divided by 4, like that. Now, technically, you might need both solutions, right? You might need the negative solution as well. And you might start getting ornery at this point, going, ah, I don't feel like typing in that stuff again. So here's the trick. Hit the second key. And of course, you can keep up with my keys on the bottom here. If you hit the second key, then the enter key, it brings up your previous calculation. Just go back and change that plus to a minus. And there you go. Now you got both solutions. Wow, pretty cool. If you've got an up-to-date calculator, you can do it a little bit more efficiently this way. <clears throat> Hit the alpha key, then the y equals key. That first button there gives you the opportunity to do a fraction, kind of straight up and down. 7 plus the square root of 97. And then we're going to hit the down arrow key to get down into the denominator, divided by 4, and we get the same thing. So one way or another, I hope that you're comfortable coming up with those numerical approximations. Comments or thoughts? Are we okay on those? Okay in getting those? It's something that I would expect and hope for you. Let's do another one just to practice simplification here. Uh, question? Yes. Very first one we did. This one? Oh, not that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the final answer was negative 2 plus or minus square root of 7 over 3. Okay. <clears throat> Let's practice simplifying this radical a little bit. A lot of times you're going to get down to a point like this and be asked to simplify it. Let me go through that in a couple different ways. So this is problem number five, or example number, uh, page number five, I should say. That's my own stuff. So negative 33 plus or minus 3 square roots of 3 over 9. Now, in being consistent with what I've done previously, I've been looking for a common factor in the numerator and then work things from there. What's common for those two terms in the numerator? What can I take out? A 3. Good. So let's take out that 3. And what's that going to leave behind? Negative 11 plus or minus square root of 3 over 9. And that's looking good. What can I do next? Nine cancel or three cancels into three once, and then the nine three times, you're left with negative eleven plus or minus square root of three over three. Bingo. Nothing wrong with that at all. Now, for my own reasons, I like it this way better, but it might be easier for you if you did this. 
Let's take that negative 33 and 3 square root of 3 and divide them both by 9. You might see that we have a common factor like we did just before. 3 goes into both of those. That gives me negative 11 over 3. 3 cancels out here, plus or minus square root of 3 over 3. So I get the same thing, it's just broken up a little bit different. And it might be easier for you. A lot of times people want to do that cancellation right here. You can't. So both of these are the same thing. Either one is acceptable to me and, well, let's see, I don't think that they'll accept the plus or minus here, but short of the plus or minus, those things are the same. Uh, and I think WebAssign will accept either format of the answers. You just might have to list them, the positive solution first, the negative solution second. All right. Thumbs up. How are you doing out there? Doing okay? Thumbs up? All right. Appreciate it. Good response there. So let's get back to trying some of these things with our quadratic formula. And let's see. Uh, example D. Six X squared plus X minus seven equals zero. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so what are you thinking? What are your thoughts on this one? Thank you. So my first response here was A equals 6, B equals 1, and C equals negative 7. All right. So heading towards the quadratic formula. I will pause this, let the viewing audience at home try it themselves.
Okay, let's check in on this one. You guys getting any answers? Mm -hmm. Did it work out nice? Nice and even? Of course, I only give you nice numbers, right? All right, so here we go. 6x squared plus x minus 7 equals 0. Let's see. If we multiply 6 times negative 7, we get negative 42. Find two numbers that multiply to negative 42 and add to, well, I guess that would be 1. And those two such numbers are 7 and negative 6. So you split up that middle term into 7 and negative 6, and you end up factoring it. And you have two things that multiply to give you 0. x minus 1 is 0, which means x equals 1, or 6x plus 7 equals 0, which means x equals negative 7 over 6. Done. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you use the quadratic formula? Oh, man. Bummer. Now, if you rewind this video when you get home or something like that, you'll hear I say you always, always, always try and factor first. Now, of course, this one's a little tougher, all right? And I get it. I mean, personally, when I was taking this class, I would be trotting out the quadratic formula all day because I was terrible at factoring these things. So mostly I expect you to use the quadratic formula on this one. But if you can factor, hey, there's nothing wrong with it. I encourage you to factor whenever possible. If you did use a quadratic formula, it would look like this. Negative, and I'm going to fill this in with you know, the proper colors here just so that you can kind of follow along a little bit. It's a negative of, well, let's see, I need a couple more things in here. Minus 4ac, negative of 1 plus or minus 1 squared minus 4 times a, which was 6, divided by a 2a, which is also 6, and then very carefully we're going to put in that negative 7. So that's where everything's going. We end up with negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 48 over 12, which is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 12, or negative 1 plus or minus 7 over 12. Now, when you get down to here, you've got to slow it down a little bit and take your time to get the positive and negative answers. You can't just go plus or minus a half or plus or minus 6 over 12. It doesn't work that way. Negative 1 plus 7 divided by 12 negative, uh, let's see, something, something feels a little off here. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was thinking of the other problem. All right, so let's see. Plus or minus, that'd be, what, 168? There we go, 168. So that's going to be 169. That's going to be your 13. I was looking at it going, wait a minute. Thank you. So negative 1 plus 13 over 12, and yeah, that does simplify. That's going to be 12 over 12, which is going to be our 1. 12 over 12, which is 1. And the other one is negative 1 minus 13 over 12, which gives you negative 14 over 12. And I do appreciate these things in lowest terms. So there's your negative 6 over, or negative 7 over 6. So there's your two solutions. Same as before, just different work. Like I said, if you can factor these, I would. My kind of compromise on these things is I'll look at that for a minute. If the factorization jumps out at me, great. If it doesn't, then I'll use the quadratic formula. At this point in your work here, if this number turns out to be a nice, perfect square, you can go, oh, man, it could have factored. If this number is like 144 or 100 or 81 or 64, something that's a nice, perfect square, basically then it's going to simplify very nicely, and it's telling you that this would have factored if you wanted to be really diligent about trying to do it. But you don't have to. You can get these problems, all these problems right, without uh, without having to factor these.
Now, do I suggest that? No. No. I'm going to take a look at something pretty straightforward. What if I gave you x squared minus uh, 6x uh, plus 8 equals 0? You could spend five minutes doing this by the quadratic formula. But let's take a look at it by factoring. How would this factor? x minus 4, x minus 2. Perfect. So you've got this times this equals 0. So either x minus 4 equals 0, meaning x equals 4, or x minus 2 equals 0, meaning x equals 2. Done. We want to look at it with the quadratic formula, just for giggles, just to see how it works. Let's compare it, all right? I want you to know and appreciate that you don't want to trot out the quadratic formula on a whim. You want to use it when you have to use it. That's pretty much when you're going to use the quadratic formula. A, B, and C. If I'm doing this with the quadratic formula, then... Stephanie, what would be A, B, and C for me in this case? Okay. Um, some help? Yeah. All right. For A, negative One. Negative six and eight. And eight. So let's fill in the quadratic formula as usual. Negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Please put that line underneath that first term. It disappears a lot of times, and it causes me stress. So please don't do that. Negative of negative 6 plus or minus negative 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is our 1, divided by a 2a. And we also have a c in here as well, which is going to be our 8. Lots of simplification here. Double negative is going to become a positive 6 plus or minus 36 plus uh, something feels wrong. Four times eight. Yeah, it's going to be minus 32. I'm sorry, I was thinking this was going to go a different way. All right, but minus 32, that'll work. Over 2, giving us 6 plus or minus square root of 4 over 2. How about that? 6 plus or minus 2 over 2. Now, if these are like terms and you have to combine them, then take a moment and just write out the positive and negative cases separately. Here, I'll get 8 over 2 which is 4. Here I'll get 4 over 2, which is 2. <laughs> Man, get out the oxygen bottle. That was a lot more work. I mean, you could probably solve six problems like this in the time it took us to do that one problem. Yes, sir? Didn't you also simplify those yourselves? Where, here? Yeah. You could. You could factor out the 2 and, and do it that way. So if you wanted to... You could also say, all right, well, that's 2 times 3 plus or minus 1 over 2. And then you have 3 plus or minus 1. And that's still going to give you your 4 and 2 as well. So nothing wrong with that. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah I, I think the, the point, though, is if you can factor it, please do. Generally speaking, I'm not going to tell you how you have to solve these things on the exam. Mm -hmm. 
let's keep going. Uh, let's try some problems from example F. Seven x squared minus four x plus one equals zero. First thing to look for is does this factor, and I'll help you out here. Seven times four is seven. There's no two numbers that multiply to seven and add to negative four. So you're stuck. So probably the best way out of this is the quadratic formula. A, B, and C. Except I think this one's going to have a little different twist on this one. So kind of keep an eye out here. This is an important example. 7, negative 4, and 1. Those would be our A, B, and C's. Negative, plus or minus something squared minus 4 times something times something over 2 times something. So it would be the negative of negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 7, and that a is going to go here and here, times c, which is 1. Are we okay with that much? Let's see if we can simplify a little bit of what we've got here. Gavin, are you seeing anything you can simplify in the numerator? You don't have to simplify it completely. Sixteen. There you go. Minus, and it'd be a 28. Nice. A lot of times when people do this for me, there's a little wishful thinking that comes through at this part. Maybe you can spot it. Ah, there you go. A lot of times people just wish away that negative. I'm sorry, it doesn't go away just because it's inconvenient. Ah, oh, yeah, we're going to end up having to use I. That's the whole point of our work in section 9.7 was to introduce I because you're going to need it in solving these quadratic equations. So it's going to look like this. 4 plus or minus. Now you're going to have to break that root up into three parts. You remember what I put in the middle part? Close. There you go, negative 1. And now i got to figure out, well, how am I going to break up the 12? 4 and 3. So I'll put the 4 here and the 3 here. 4 times negative 1 times 3. Get that gives me my negative 12. But now I can continue to simplify this. Let's see. Carl, what's that numerator going to look like? 4 plus or minus what? Hmm? Over 14. And let's do it. A different way than I've been doing it for the most part. I'm going to split this up. And the reason I'm splitting it up like this is because WebAssign is going to want it in the form of A plus B times I. That's the form that they want it. So you're going to have to break it up into two little pieces. It's not going to accept it as one big fraction like I will. I'd accept it. Um, once you clean it up like this, you can get rid of the 2's here. That's going to be 2 over 7 plus or minus i times the square root of 3 over 7. They might put in the i for you, so be careful of that. Square root of 3 over 7 times i. I'm not sure what they do for their notation there. They might have the i there for you, but they're going to ask you to write it 
in two different pieces, A and BI. So heads up on that. Whew. All right, that was a good one. That was a good one. Expect something like this. I mean, that's the whole reason we introduced I on your exam. Let me open up Desmos real quick and show you a little something about these quadratic equations that we're getting. So let's look back at, say, this example here real quick, because that one worked out pretty nice. So I'm just going to type in x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals y. y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. And if you look at where this crosses the x-axis, what's the y-coordinate where this crosses the x-axis? The y-coordinate. Zero. Yeah, it crosses at zero. And in fact, both of these y-coordinates are zero. So when the y-coordinate is zero, if this was a zero, I would get exactly the same thing that I've got here. Zero equals this expression. And the two solutions are exactly where this crosses the x-axis, 0 and 4. What about some of our other ones? For instance, we had 6x squared plus x minus 7. So y equals 6x squared plus x minus 7. Now, that didn't cross at some nice, neat, even places, but it did cross still, right? You got your solution at 1, and this is just the decimal value for negative 7 sixths. Okay. What do you suppose I'm going to see when I graph the last one, the one we just did? y equals 7x squared plus or minus 4x plus 1. Where is this one going to cross the x-axis? Plus 1. Or does it? What do you suppose we're going to see? So these other two cross the x-axis exactly where we thought they would. Well, what's going to happen when we look at this next one? Well, let's find out. Hmm. Does it cross the x-axis? No. So what's going on is that this graph only touches the x-axis in your imagination. All right. That's why you're getting those imaginary solutions is because they don't have any real solutions. Now, we can't see things with enough geometry to understand where and why this does cross an axis and gives us some solutions, but it does have two solutions. They're just not real solutions. They don't cross this x-axis. So that's what's going on. That's why you're getting these imaginary numbers. All right. Let's see here. Let's do one more example like that. And then I'm going to want you to do some thinking on some examples. It's going to be just like something that I would put on the exam. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back and try another one like this. Let's try, uh, let's see. Let's see here. 16. Yeah, okay. Let's try this last one. 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. So another one from example F. Three x squared minus four x plus two equals zero. Again, look to see if these things factor. Now, if you're not good at factoring these kind of things, I get it. You just bail out and use a quadratic formula. No shame. This one doesn't factor, so we won't be using the quadratic formula on that one. B is our negative four again. Be careful with that. Negative there. It's easy to make a mistake with that double negative. Let's fill things in.
Now, I have no problem if you just jump down from here down to the next step where this is just one number. That is, it's going to be 4 plus or minus square root. That's going to be 16 minus 24 is going to be negative 8. So if you want to just jump down to square root of negative 8, that's fine. Now, how do you get there? It's up to you. Are you good with your mental arithmetic? Great. If not, there's nothing wrong. In fact, I encourage you, if you're not really good with your arithmetic, just take out a calculator, do negative 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times 2. And it should pop out with a negative 8. Great. So if you wanted to just immediately jump down to here, I'm fine with that. But get this part right. Now, if you don't get that part right, well, it's hard for me to give you partial credit because it probably will simplify in a much different way. 4 plus or minus, well, we're going to break it up into the standard three roots again. <clears throat> so I'll put negative 1 in the middle. What two go on the either end here? 4 and 2. 4 and 2. Perfect. So let's bring that over to here. That's going to be 4 plus or minus 2i square roots of 2 over 6. You can't cancel the 4 and the 6. I'm sorry. It just doesn't work that way. So, yeah, a couple possibilities. <clears throat> One would be to split it up. 4 over 6 plus or minus 2i square roots of 2 over 6. And it feels like, well, well, why can I cancel here and I couldn't cancel here? Because these are added and subtracted. You can't cancel into an addition or subtraction. You're not doing that here. All these things are being multiplied. So I get 2 thirds plus or minus i square root of 2 over 3. Be careful. Web assign will probably want it written like this, plus or minus square root of 2 over 3, and then the i next to it. I'll accept this. I'll even accept it if you did it a little different way. Or 2, 2 plus or minus i square root of 2 over 6. Cancel that out. We're left with 2 plus or minus i square root of 2 over 3. Those are the same thing. So whichever form of this you want to give me, that's okay for me. This is probably what you're going to have to do for WebAssign. But that, or any of these, that works for me. There's one last thing I want to work on with you, and I'm going to give you a minute to think about it for yourselves. Think about this with a neighbor. So here's some quadratic equations. Now, the problem is not going to be to solve it. The problem is going to be how would you solve it. And I'll give you three different choices. So the first choice would be factoring. The second choice is the square root property. That's what we did the other day. Square root property is stuff that you would use like at our, our first example that we started out the day with. When we got down to this point right here, when you had a nice perfect square equals this, that's when you use the square root property. So factoring, square root property, or the quadratic formula. It's up to you. Work with some neighbors. I'll give you a couple minutes. Go through these and just decide, well, what would you do to solve? What makes sense to you? Now, you can move things around a little bit if it helps out. You know, try and figure out, well, would this factor? It's easy to factor, you know, it's up to you. So what would you think? What method would you use? And I'm trying to get you to think about how you would do these things to help yourself out. Do you want to work on the boards together with these for a minute? All right, let's do that. So let me just, I'm just going to put you in groups of three real quickly. Three here. One, two, and three. Seven. Three here. Daniel. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Um, three here. And three here. All right. Just uh, find your.
your, find yourself a spot on the board and work on these. See what you think. Up. I got some markers over here. Just, just write down which method that you would use. Uh, Yeah, you don't have to solve these things, just tell me how you would yeah, solve them. You're about to have me solve this. Well, I was going to write it, so I just write it down as like. So, would I write it in the formula though? So, I just put two Alright. I was going to put it in the form Yeah. I got an answer. Have you watched the I caught part of it. I was oh, listening to it on the radio. I listened to some of it on the radio. Yeah. I listened to some of it on the radio. I was kind of disappointed about Hutchinson. Yeah. That's really bad news for us moving forward. Yeah, exactly. No, it's not. Yeah, 
look at your neighbors. Are you agreeing with your neighbors? Do you guys agree on these things? Um, Are there some differences? You guys in agreement? Let me share with you my thoughts on these. All right, so you can go back to your seats here. And let me share with you what I would think about these. I think the first one, we're all in agreement, right? Does this factor? No. If it doesn't factor, it doesn't look like it's lined up to do the square root property, so what would I do? Quadratic formula. How about this one? What's what you got on that one? Square root property. Square root property. Absolutely. How about this one? Factor. Now you needed to do a little bit of thinking on this one. Probably rewrite it as x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0, but that factors. Two numbers that multiply to negative 8, add to negative 2, yeah, factor. So a big factor on that one. A lot of people worked harder on this one than they should. What's the fastest way to do this one? Ooh, quadratic formula will work. But if you're using the quadratic formula, you have to keep in mind you'd have... 5y squared plus y plus 0 equals 0. Your a, b, and c would be a equals 5, 
B equals 1, C equals 0. And yeah, you could run through the quadratic formula. But what's the first thing you try when you're trying to solve these kinds of problems? Factor. And there's a GCF. Take out the Y. 5Y plus 1 equals 0. You get two solutions, 0 and negative 1 fifth. Done. Factor that one. You cannot use the square root property on that one. It's not set up for that. If you have 5y squared plus y equals 0, if you move the y to the other side and take the square root, say maybe divide by 5 first, if you take plus or minus the square root, well, you're going to have a y underneath the radical. You're supposed to solve for y. You can't because you don't have y by itself there. So factor for sure. This one's a little bit gray. Some people saw it, some people didn't. What'd you get for this one? Factor. This one will factor. It factors as 2x plus 1 times x plus 3. Now, I'd be forgiving on this one because not everyone, including me, can always see this thing. So if you wanted, if you wanted to say quadratic formula, I'd accept that. If you said factoring, I'd accept that. So that one has kind of two answers here. But this one, the numbers are really ugly. They're deliberately ugly. It should be screaming out one thing here. What is it? Quadratic formula. Yeah, just bail on that one. It's like, I'm not even going to think about that one. You got numbers like pi, 1.7. No thanks. Some of you didn't work hard enough on this one. Some of you bailed out with the quadratic formula right away, which will work. But let's see how what else you could do. What can you do with this one? Yeah, the two factors out front. 2 times x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And wow, we're back up to our original problem just up, up here. That factors as x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. Look at this. In seconds, you got the solutions. 2 can't equal 0, so we ignore that. But x minus 4 could equal 0 when x equals 4. x plus 2 could equal 0 when x equals negative 2. So factoring all day on that one. Definitely the most easy. Now, would you get the right answer with the quadratic formula? Yeah, eventually. All right, but it'd take you like five minutes, whereas this takes you seconds. How about the last one? What are we doing the last one? What you got? Quadratic formula? Iris? Ooh, it's almost the difference of squares. Ah, uh, but what do we know about the sum of squares? Sum of squares is prime. So it won't factor. Hmm. But what about if I just move the 9 to the other side? 4x squared equals negative 9. Well, I could divide both sides by 4. Now what can I do? Take the square root property. Use the square root property. You get x is plus or minus the square root of negative 9 fourths. What's the square root of negative 9 fourths? 3, 9, or... Ah, well done. Let's break it up into square root of negative 9 over square root of 4, which is 3i over 2, as Joshua was saying. Nice. So this one, I would expect people to do the square root property on that one, for sure. Does it make a difference what way you approach these things? Should you just use the quadratic formula for everything? No. And that's the one thing I want to make abundantly clear. This is a reasonable test question to ask, is not to solve it, but how would you solve it? And expect kind of a variety of things. But I tried to give you a variety here so that you know what to look for in terms of tricks and what you're going to solve. Like I said, I think it's a reasonable problem for an exam. Is it going to be the only problem? No. You should expect some problems that are going to make you use the quadratic formula. And in particular, probably some that are going to make you use the quadratic formula and have an imaginary part to their solution or a complex solution. Okay, nice. Comments or thoughts on this one? Is this a is this a good test question or a bad test question? What do you think? Give me some feedback.
Would you be like, okay, yeah, I can do that one? Or would you be like, no, that was terrible? <laughs> I think it'd be similar. I mean, let's take a look at some of the tricks. I mean, this one, you move the eight to the other side, and oh, yeah, that factors pretty easily. This one, I'd have to give credit to both of them. I don't expect people to be good at factoring this, mostly because I wasn't. This one should scream out quadratic formula, especially when you get these ugly numbers there. That should be screaming out. This one, if you factored out the two, boy, that's pretty easy just taking out the GCF. If you don't have an X term or middle term, then the quadratic, or excuse me, the square root property is probably a good candidate. Could you use a quadratic formula here? Sure, but that B would be zero. So, Overall, hopefully not too bad. S study hard. This is a, an important section.